Hey everyone, this is DW Darius, and welcome to another day in the fish room. So today I want to give you guys another episode of a day in the life to give you guys a little idea of what it's like having a fish room like mine. Um, if you saw my past few episodes, I usually show awesome things, things that I enjoy. But this week I want to give you guys a look at some things that happened this week that I definitely did not enjoy because I think it's fair. I show you guys the awesomeness. I also got to show you guys some of the downsides and some of the not so awesome things. So today we're going to be looking at some of the things that happened this week that I definitely was not proud of. So we're going to start off with the worst of all the news I have to share with you guys. So firstly, if you look at my 210 gallon aquarium which is upstairs, um, there's a fish missing from this aquarium and it is my black belt cichlid. So earlier this week I came and I found him at the top of the tank gasped with the air and um, he was just beating up every bag, he had torn fins and it looked like he was in a fight with who, I'm not sure, but he was in a fight and he got beat up pretty bad and he was at the point of death. So what I did was I came down in the fish room and if you look over there, I started off one, I started off one of those tanks as a quarantine tank. Um, I filled it up um, with tank water from the tank upstairs. So all 20 gallons was from directly from the tank upstairs. I grabbed me a filter from my planet tank so I could have some biological bacteria and I had it all running and planned out. I brought the but I brung um, the black belt downstairs. It did take me a little while to catch him, about 20 minutes. But after I caught him, I brought him straight downstairs. Um, I dosed a little bit of Melifix. And um, I thought it was gonna be good. I thought I was actually gonna give this fish another chance. I came home the next day from work. I didn't check in the morning. I checked when I got home after work, which was about 6 p.m. And I found him dead. So the thing is, I'm not sure what killed him. I'm not sure if it was the stress of me catching him because it, once again it took me about 20 minutes. Um, he was running all away from me, hitting rocks, hitting driftwood and stuff like that, trying to get away from me. So I'm not sure if he was injured worse while I was trying to catch him, or if just the stress of moving him, or if his original injuries were just that bad. But um, he, I lost him, and that was a huge loss for me. A very big fish. I had him now for over a year. And for a Vija cichlid, that black belt was very mild. You know, you usually Vijas are known to be very aggressive, so to lose that fish was a huge loss um, because he definitely wasn't as bad as most can be. And he was very big, and I had him for a long time, and no one wants to lose a fish like that. So that was the biggest loss this week. Um, as far as what to do with this course, I'm still trying to figure it out. Usually I lose smaller fish. This is like the biggest fish I've lost in a while. With my smaller fish, I usually flush them down the toilet. Um, this one I can't bury him because it just snowed outside. So probably what I'm going to do is let him stay out in the sun. Hopefully he can dehydrate his body. And then I could maybe mummify him and put him in a picture frame or something like that. But yeah, that was the biggest loss this week. I no longer have my black belt cichlid. After that, I discovered that I had two more fish that were sick. Now I've been watching these two fish for a while and they've definitely been showing signs of sickness. And they are my pearl scale geophagus and my red terror cichlid. Both of these are very young and I noticed that they weren't eating a lot. They were getting very skinny. They had white poop and that all leads to parasites. So that left me with two sick fish. Right now I have them in quarantine. The same tank that I had the black belt in, I took out all the water, put new water in it from the tank that the two were originally in, which was that 55, and um, started to fresh. Now this is day two of them being in quarantine and they definitely are still alive, so that's good. But the thing is, I still got to get these parasites out. Now once again, it's something that I noticed a couple of weeks ago. And um, so far I've tried Melifix and I've tried another medicine, Clout. And so far these fish are just not recovering. But yeah, once again, it's only been two days. But yeah, this is the second thing that I'm dealing with, this sickness. 
Um, it's crazy how these things happen back to back. The same week my black girl died, the same week I find two other fish sick, and it's just crazy. I'm not sure if they're related or what, but um, a lot of times when you keep multiple fish, um, you, you have periods when it's just everything goes okay, everything's fine, and then at one point they all just snap. So yeah, you're looking at right now the two of them in quarantine, and two days so far, still no recovery, still no improvement. But these two are in here and hopefully recover. And that's the second bad news of the week. Okay everyone, and the last thing that happened this week that definitely sucked was in my 40 gallon reef aquarium, which is to the left of me. Now this is something that I knew was gonna happen. And pretty much in my 40 gallon reef aquarium, all my corals, they're doing very good. They're having a lot of success. And you know, that's somewhat of a problem because my tank is only 40 gallons, about three feet long, about maybe a foot and a half wide. So definitely not a lot of space for these corals to grow. And what they begin to do is war with each other and to fight. And that's why I, that was starting to happen. Um, and I was losing a couple of my favorite corals. If you look at my Duncan coral, I have about six heads that died because they were getting stung by this species of green star polyp. So um, I was just getting a lot of fighting from my coral, so I ended up having to move my Duncan coral. Um, the thing is, you gotta move them in the correct spot where they can have enough light and enough flow. And you know, you really can't just look at it and figure out what's the best spot. Well, when the light comes to light, you can, but when it comes to flow, it's really not too easy. So I have to move this Duncan coral all around the tank trying to find a good spot. I had to replace coral, so you know, that was a headache. Trying to make sure everything came out right. The good thing is that for now everything is okay. I ended up changing the flow of this aquarium um, so that it could fit the new placement of the Duncan coral, which is working out pretty good. I also ended up moving my trumpet corals and my um, frog spawn coral. But um, so far everything is okay. But the only problem is this ongoing coral fighting thing is going to continue. If you take a look at my Montepora coral, this thing is starting to cover some of my other corals. It's already, the red is already overpowering the green and it's starting to cover my Zoas. Pretty soon it's going to be covering my other Montebora and that's pretty much a big issue in my reef aquarium. I have my corals having so much success that now they're starting to fight for space and territory, for light and nutrients. You know, no one wants to lose corals in that type of way or anyway. So yeah, that's the third problem that I'm dealing with. That is a slow problem so I can always fix it like I did just now with my um, Duncan Coral. But you know, it is a bit of a headache. So YouTube, that's been a look at some of the things I've been dealing with this week. Now, once again, if you've seen this series of A Day in a Life, most of the things I have to share with you guys are awesomeness and just fun things. But I think it's only fair, once again, to give you guys a look at some of the problems that do come or that I am facing with my fish room. So if you have any questions or comments, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. Also, I do have a little bit of good news. So I'm getting back into photography, taking pictures of my fish. So if you want to see the pictures that I take, just like me on Facebook or click my Facebook page and become a friend, a friend with me on Facebook or go to Instagram and type in DWS Darius and you can um, follow me there and I will be posting pictures of my fish because fish are awesome and I just love taking pictures of them. So yeah, YouTube, that's been a look at a day in the life. Thank you everybody who's hitting the sub button, really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.